Hello and welcome to another episode of From No Crypto to No Crypto. This is the Crypto Coach Blockchain Wayne with another cryptocurrency podcast. Today's episode brought to us by Blockchain Training Academy, uh, cryptocurrency education for the masses. Now today I have joined with me uh, Bilal Mia. Now Bilal and I work together. Bilal is the founder and CEO of the Blockchain Training Academy. He's been in the crypto space for a while and some of you may know him as the Crypto Vader. And I asked Bilal to come on and just really have some crypto chat and talk about uh, one of the things that's been on my mind wanting to share within a podcast episode is you hear a lot of talk now about central bank currencies that are central banks that are going to be issuing digital currencies or governments that are going to be in, you know potentially issuing digital currencies and what does that mean for both adoption of cryptocurrency and what does that mean for bitcoin and other decentralized cryptocurrencies so Bilal. Thanks for joining us today, man. A pleasure to have you on. Thank you for having me, Wayne. Pleasure to be here again. All right. Thank you. Thank you. It's definitely uh, it's a lot easier to get a hold of people right now with everybody being at home and having time to dig in and, um, you know, learn learn new skills or they're taking advantage of, of this. So that's kind of why I wanted to do this. This episode is because so many people I've talked to recently uh, that prior had no interest in cryptocurrencies, not because they didn't like it, but just because it didn't seem like a problem that they needed solved. And now we're starting to reach out about that. So um, tell us a yeah. little bit, you know, about uh, what, what do you think about these, these, um, you know, how, how these other currencies that are going to be launched are going to impact uh, the current cryptocurrency market? Yeah, I think um, central bank digital currencies, it's going to take probably another few years yet probably about two to three years before we see a lot of these central bank digital currencies actually go you know you know people talking about them and actually getting used to them but it's something that's been happening over you know you know that china obviously they've been developing their central bank digital currency and obviously because of the pandemic which started in that part of the world a lot of it had to kind of take a back seat but you know they announced on the I think it was the 4th of April that they're continuing the development of central bank digital currency for China. And obviously we had that whole episode with uh, Mark Zuckerberg with the Libra and, uh, you know, they're saying that China is going to go ahead of it. You know, if we don't do something, it's always been on, on you know, in people's mind that we're going to see this and going back a few years, you know, I've worked for a bank. I used to work for Barclays only for a few months just to kind of, understand how the banking system works and one thing that i recognized uh, you know at that time was you know the 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 uncomfortable feeling that actually bank staff have dealing with cash it's unbelievable you you would think that a bank you know people working at a bank are used to cash and coins and you know it's not a big problem but actually they had um you know sanitizers at the desk and you know, it, it wasn't very nice to actually work with coins and cash, you know, stocking up on the cash machines and everything and having to send away bags of coins. And, you know, it, it's it's basically now that we have this pandemic, it's pushed this real kind of, it's become more real for people. You know, they're, they're starting to fear um, catching this virus from cash and uh, cash itself, uh, Obviously, we know that fiat currency is all about trusting that it's worth something, that somebody's going to accept it. But that trust is now taking another dimension. Now you're kind of not trusting that cash because you think you're going to get infected. But, you know, scientifically, I mean, I think they've looked into it and said that the the, the risk of catching um, the virus from cash is quite low unless somebody actually sneezes into it. But, you know, still, I think it's going to be playing people's mind. And I've seen, you know, obviously, um, you know that I have a, a family business, a restaurant. And I've seen a lot of young people starting to use contactless payments. It's, it's like the norm now. It's taken a year or two, but it's, it's the norm. It's kind of caught on now. A lot of people prefer to just basically tap and pay. Um, it's, it's convenient, you know, they don't have to carry cash around with them. And now because of this new dimension that we're, we're the problem that we're going through right now, this challenge is a global thing. You know, it's not like just for the UK or the US or, 
you know, somewhere in the Middle East or in China, or it's everywhere, you know, we're all kind of going through this. So um, I think in the next few years, we're going to see a central bank digital currency, probably about 10% of the, the central banks are likely to do, start using central bank digital currencies in the next year or two or start developing them. But, you know, it's going to catch on. And, uh, you know, I think I think it's it's good, actually. I think it's good because it is different. It is different to Bitcoin because of what Bitcoin stands for. I mean, you know, if, if somebody understands Bitcoin deeply, they would know that it's all about decentralization. But when it comes to central bank digital currencies, we don't have that. But a lot of the infrastructure probably can be used for, you know, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies to start coming in. But I think, you know, you know, I'm probably going to talk about this a bit more. I think the real need is education and people to understand the difference between the central bank digital currencies and something like Bitcoin or decentralized currencies that are going to be are being developed and are, are already out there, but people just don't know the value of it and what it can do for them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was going to be, you know, kind of my next question is um, another question you may get and I get as well when people may say, well, if if central banks and governments come out with their own digital currencies, why would we need Bitcoin or why would we need some of these other uh, cryptocurrencies that are already out there? Um, you know, what would you say to someone like that when they when they ask that question? I know I've got a response, but I'd love to hear yours. Yeah. Well, a central bank digital currencies are really representing the fiat currency in digital form. That's all it is. You know, it's not like it's something different. Uh, we we already, you know, when we use our fiat, when we're putting cash into the bank, you know, you you're basically, um, you know, the banks aren't holding your cash there. You know, they're using it, and uh, it's all kind of digital form, as in it's on a computer, on a ledger, on a central ledger, but this is going to be like the next step to that which is basically individuals using wallets you know and uh, you know wh when i was working for barclays back in 20 i think it was 2015 you know there was a big drive to move people to using mobile banking even though you know it was a year before or two years before that they started um you know having the platforms and everything for mobile banking there was a massive drive in 2015 and actually during that time Barclays was starting to look at uh, blockchain, you know, and uh, I think they had, um, you know, they were they were doing these like uh, uh, meetups in London, and uh, Cefalo was one of the uh, exchanges that they they invested in, and um, those others as well. But at that time, I mean, uh, mobile banking was like there was a massive drive for these machines that were put into the banks that are norm now. But, you know, the idea was that people would start using these machines to do their banking and, and not queue up to go to the counter and actually talk to a person. But, you know, even though I was training individuals, more kind of more senior, not senior, like senior citizens, that's what I mean. I mean, I was trying to get them to start seeing the advantages of mobile banking. It was a real struggle because a lot of these people were having problems with basics of uh, using the internet or setting up a printer, you know, and I ended up like teaching them the basics and uh, mobile banking was like, oh, it was over their head. And uh, over time, I left the bank um, after six months, um, you know, one, once we had the machines in and everything. But even now when I go to the same, you know, branch, you see the machines there but only a very small percentage using the machines. They're still queuing up because people want that face-to-face -face contact. So a lot of these people don't actually see anyone during the whole week. And it's like a, a social thing to go to the bank and, you know, have a little chat and everything, you know? So there was a massive drive, but the thing is, I feel that, you know, the, this digital currency the next step would be the wallets, you know, from mobile banking to having a wallet. Then it comes to understanding what's the difference between having a mobile, uh, um, an app on your mobile that allows you to do mobile banking and actually having a wallet that stores your digital currency. So people will, will, won't understand the difference between the two because it will be very similar in their mind. And in, in some cases it has to be because 
you know, if you make it too complicated, too technical for people, then it's like if you are asking people to store their private keys and things like that, then it's good. It, people are not going to, you know, embrace it. But I think the advantages would be, you know, this pandemic that we're going through right now is, is going to help that push towards CB, uh, you know, like central bank digital currencies because people are going to understand that we need to use these digital forms. You know, they have to get used to it. And it takes a while for people to change their mindset and get used to new technology, usually around a decade for a lot of the technologies like a mobile phone or smartphones or the next level things. And, and Bitcoin's already had a decade. So for a lot of us, you know, even though we're a very small percentage, you know, globally uh, as, a, as a community, um, I think uh, it kind of puts a lot of responsibility on us to um, educate. Yeah. And I think there is a kind of a us and them in our community where we think, you know, the, the central banks, the governments, they're, they're basically against something like Bitcoin or our community. But I think there has to be some kind of a bridge. And that, I think that bridge is going to be more apparent as we move forward, where a lot of these startups are going to be, you know, creating these solutions for the banks, for the, um, you know, the corporate world, um, where, you know, you will see, and, and to be honest, you know, the, a lot of these uh, banks like Barclays and HSBC, you know, the, the high street banks that you hear of, they're obviously going to work with what the central banks are doing. And, uh, they've actually kind of understood what blockchain can provide when it comes to efficiency and everything else. So this, um, they're, aware, they're aware of the community. They're aware of what, what's out there. Uh, XRP, for example, or, or, or other currencies that are basically, uh, you know, like XRP for the SWIFT payment. So they're aware of the solutions. And I think what you'll have is these partnerships between um, some of these projects and uh, basically people who use these central bank digital currencies, they will see the advantages. And one of the advantages will, will be quicker payments and, uh, you know, having more control of your, of your money. However, I think what people will also realize is that there is a lack of control. And the only way people are going to realize that there is a lack of control of their finances is if they actually see the problems and if they see an alternative. And that's when it comes back to us where we have to um, educate people. I guess it's just one very, uh, the buzzword decentralization, which, which in, my, uh, in, my, in my opinion is the real buzzword, you know, that of the future. But as we've seen over the past few years, the buzzword has been Bitcoin and it has been blockchain, but not as much decentralization. And I think that needs to start being what we push out. The, the advantages of having a decentralized payment system and what it can do for people. And I think it goes back to um, understanding that there's a large majority. Well, there's a large <laughs> we're talking about, I think it's over two billion people who are unbanked. And, uh, you know, what happens to those people, you know? Um, so, yeah, I think I think it's coming. It's coming definitely. And I think there will be a place for currencies like Bitcoin. However, nobody knows the future. Nobody knows what's going to happen. But a lot of the things we're, we're seeing that's happening right now, I think it's going to pave the way to um, that kind of partnership between centralized and decentralized. But it's going gonna, it's, it's, it's gonna to be interesting times, I think. Yeah. Absolutely, man. You know, a couple points that you talked on. Um, I told somebody last night, I was, I was telling them about the difference between the currencies and how decentralized um, can benefit. And I agree that, you know, force, you know, having people that are going to be forced to use wallets and those common terms that they're used to is going to help. Uh, but just like anything, just like we're seeing today where governments across the world are just pressing print on their fiat currencies and just printing more to try to prop up the market or infuse into the market. Um, and the long-term repercussions of that is inflation, right? Massive inflation. Um, it, that still can happen with the central bank controlled digital currency. They can still press the digital print button anytime. Um, so having something decentralized and not controlled by any entity, while it may scare those big institutions, 
it's also something that I think most people would agree when they understand it. Mm. That's what they'll truly want. Um, I think the problem is that there is a lack of understanding. There's a yeah. lack of financial education. Uh, we, we, you know, even myself, I'm learning a lot of things that I n- never ever looked at. I never had the time for. Obviously, this is this uh, current situation with the uh, the pandemic has given me that time to kind of look into things that I haven't looked into. You know how the economy works and everything else. You know that you know I, I'm I'm fine <laughs> looking at all this and understanding it. And a lot of people have to. It doesn't matter you know, where you are on your journey, um, if you're an entrepreneur or if you're just kind of getting started out of university or college, uh, even for children, I think it's so important to understand how money works, how, uh, you know, money has evolved over time and uh, to understand what's happening right now with all these subsidies and everything else, you know, with the bailouts yeah. and um, you know, to understand that we're actually, a lot of these businesses out there are connected. Uh, if you think about point of sale solutions, um, massive impact on that because businesses aren't there. What they're going to do, you know, yeah. you know, whatever whatever business you're running, you're going to be impacted uh, negatively by this. But from this, um, you know, pandemic, I think what's going to happen is you're going to see uh, there's going to be so many problems, and there's, where there's many problems, there are going to be people who can provide solutions. Yeah, uh, we're seeing like car manufacturers, um, you know, um, working on ventilators, and you know that I think that's that's the way forward where you have to innovate and kind of move from what you're doing to do other things, and people need to think out the box. Um, yeah, yeah, and we think about all the time of different um, companies or industries that didn't adapt and innovate when when the world shifted, and some of those companies are no longer around. You know, but a lot of two things that I that I also um, kind of want to shift the conversation to, and you, you, you touched on it briefly, but you know, I feel two things that are also, that are really going to help move towards adoption of cryptocurrencies and more towards decentralized cryptocurrencies. Uh, actually you touched on both of them. So, um, you know, one of them being think, you know, having, having these companies that are creating solutions that are familiar to people, um, you know, as far as the process to what they do, when you think about technology over time, right? Uh, when you think about email itself, email, people were used to physical mail. So to create a digital solution called email, you know, many years ago uh, and calling it email and even the icon, right? It, it's a letter with that looks like an envelope and that's what's familiar to people. So that's how they were able to bridge the gap. Just like we call cryptocurrency wallets. We call them wallets because people are used to holding money in a wallet, but it's not really a wallet at all, Right. Uh, it still resides in the same place. You, it, you know, a more apt turn would, would have been keychain, right? Because it gives us the keys to access it where it is. Um, but using those terms that are familiar where people can help. And the other thing being education, which is, um, you know, what we do at the Blockchain Training Academy. So um, kind of tell me yeah. your thoughts with everything going on with uh, with people at home in the pandemic right now, and some people are focusing on learning more things. Why should people focus on learning more about cryptocurrency and blockchain uh, and being familiar with um, all aspects of that? Well, I think um, the first thing people need to understand is that we live in a digital age. I mean, currencies, uh, you know, we're not in the industrial age now. We're, we're in the digital age. Money is going to take a new form. It's going to be these digital currencies um, when you have mobile apps that you can do mobile banking on you're still basically uh, your, your money is in the in the banking system you know it's not actually it's basically you're seeing a balance on your mobile app for your mobile banking but you you actually don't have them physically in that bank and there are other issues around fees, around the time it takes to actually make a transaction. And there's a lot of uh, things that people are kind of used to as the norm. When it comes to something like Bitcoin, you basically, when you have the ownership of that private key, that public key, and you have a balance of your Bitcoin, what that balance actually is, is basically the authority for you to make a transaction and send it on to the next person. And 
it's, it's a part of a ledger that goes all the way back to the first transaction on the blockchain. So when you understand that this is a ledger that is decentralized, meaning that it's not part of a central ledger controlled by a central authority, it, it basically people need it, this is where people trip up when it gets a bit technical but it's so important to kind of go over it a few times and understand that this does not this is not something that can be you know affected by say you know printing lots of bitcoin there's a scarcity to it it's a 21 million bitcoin there's scarcity every four years like we're just approaching the halving you know in a few days it's going to be half the amount that comes into the circulation of Bitcoin, there's a lot of things that have already been implemented in in the way Bitcoin has been created that kind of provides a solution to the current problem with the with the 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 financial world right now, where you have all this inflation, all this money printing, and um, you know it's not backed up by anything. And if you, if people lose faith in the government or the you know the monarchy, you know what is it that basically you know you're you're backing it up by and also it's like we're talking about risk of hyperinflation and things that people think won't affect them in the us or the uk something that you would think that is only uh, applicable to somewhere like zimbabwe or something but these are like unprecedented times these are like crazy times right now and anything can happen so you know i'm i'm so tempted to tell my parents you know don't keep the money in the bank right now you know, put your money into things like assets, you know, digital assets is going to be like really hard for them to understand. But, you know, you know, land and property and, you know, gold, silver, you know, that kind of thing is more secure in my eyes than basically putting it in a bank right now where things can go fresh because you don't know how much your $20 is going to be worth in the next few years, you know, what, what you can actually buy with it. But when you're looking at Bitcoin, Bitcoin is, yes, it's the grandfather cryptocurrency, it's the first cryptocurrency. And nothing is to say that Bitcoin is going to be adopted like the, by the masses. But from Bitcoin, from the technology behind Bitcoin, has come so many different types of currencies. And they all have this element. They have this decentralization element where nobody actually controls the, 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 the currency. As in, it's a network of people a peer-to-peer -peer network and it's this trust within the technology itself within the mathematics within the and it's a lot of the things like human psychology is being used so it's really fascinating and i think what people need to do is when you have so much time on your hands right now a lot of us are uh, you know on lockdown we're at home you know this is the time when you know in the past you may have said okay i haven't got time for that you know or you know it's not something that interests me but I think for, for once, you know, when we have this time, you know, be a part of the community or be a part of some, uh, you know, sign up to a course or something that actually can teach you what decentralization can do and actually think out the box because it's unprecedented times, right? And it's right now in the current situation to find a solution, we need something that is like once in a in a in a like a lifetime, you know, change that's going to solve things. And I think the the change is going to come through uh, understanding the the you know the technology of blockchain because so many industries have already started to use blockchain to speed things up to remove the the obstacles that were in the path like uh, the supply chain obviously we've we've seen so many issues around supply chain when it when it comes to like delivering of masks and all that but you know you can't eliminate you can't take away humans you know in it from the process at the moment but go forward a decade two decades as as we are more dependent on robots to do these tasks for us, AI, you know, and we live in a virtual world where, you know, we're connecting like right now, you know, where there's no, there's all this social distancing, you know, if we had, um, I mean, the internet is struggling right now, you know, a lot of the services that we're used to, we're actually having to wait longer, we're getting frustrated because we're so used to things happening instantly. But when we have a decentralized internet where it can't get hacked, you know, there's so many advantages of a blockchain in various industries. When people understand that, you know, somebody can't, you know, like Zoom, for example, a lot of people have been using Zoom, 
and it, the, one of the issues around like uh, security came up with Zoom calls. You know, if you like, even the prime minister in the UK is using Zoom. You know, when you have security issues, then they I think they did a quick um, re release to kind of solve the issue. But people need education on the basics as well with their apps like Facebook. You know, go into the settings and make sure that you know you know what information is being collected and you know when you're using zoom or even when you're not using an application that's requiring your um webcam you can actually go into the settings of your computer and turn your camera off you know so that when it's idle when you're not in front of your laptop that somebody can't hack into your system and basically use your camera and it's scary for people because we're always fearful of what we don't understand so that's why it's so important for people to educate right now because that's the way the world is moving and yes we will have laptops that will have um you know these uh, security security things in place because people need to make it it needs to be really easy for people to adopt um this technology so you don't want people to have to go through the settings and everything but i think when people start exploring the problems around this technology that we're using right now only then would they be able to prepare for the technology that's coming. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. Well, man, some great talking points today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, we're going to end it here in a minute. Uh, I definitely, yeah, I, know, I know you and I could probably talk for hours about cryptocurrency. You know, uh, like I was <laughs> saying, the guy last night I, uh, I was talking to, they called me with some questions because he's interested in learning more. You know, we, we talked for a while just because this is, Kind of what we're passionate about and we realize how important education is so um make sure if you want to hear more from Bilal or myself you want to learn more about cryptocurrency uh, check out so the, the the link is in the description of this podcast for blockchain training academy uh, we've got a great community on facebook too we can we can add you to if, if you become a member uh and just teach you more about what what implications this can have in our life? You know, Bilal, I don't know about you, but I tell people all the time that I compare this to, you think about the internet and the phone industry. Uh, when the internet first came out, it was new technology, but it was being delivered through old infrastructure, through telephone lines, right? And eventually, now when you think about how that technology has reversed itself, where now um, phone, phone calls are just an app on top of the internet, right? That old technology has been completely replaced, replaced with an app. And that's pretty much what, you know, what this, this technology has the ability to do when it comes to financial institutions. You know, where banking is just gonna be an app built on the blockchain where your trust is, is secure. So what are your thoughts on that real quick? Yeah, I think, I think a lot of the technology that we were basically uh, used to now uh, were the major technologies of the last decade. And now it's like it's become the norm. We, you know, like I, I hardly use my phone to make calls. Yeah. You know, for me, that's like a, that's my computer. You know, that's my laptop and everything in one. Um, do video calls, do Facebook lives, and all all this. You know, manage your community, manage my whole business um, from my phone. You know, that's what it's for. It's my it's my office. My phone is my office, and yeah. and that's the way things move on. You know, but when a new technology comes in for the first time. It's a bit clunky. It's expensive. Look at three D printing, for example. If you if you want a three D printer in your house right now, it's going to cost you a bit of money, and uh, it's going to cost you, you know, I don't know what they use, but all the plastic and everything that you need for that three D printer, it's going to cost you a lot of money, and it's going to take about twenty four hours to actually print something out, you know, that is physical, you know. But that time, over time, you know, three D printers are going to be smaller. It's going to be more efficient. It's going to take less time. You'll be able to print something within like minutes instead of hours. So as time goes on, things improve. I can remember my first typewriter and it was like, you know, my first typewriter in the, in the 90s, it was like the best typewriter out there. It was really expensive, about 250 pounds, only because it could erase text. You know, it's like now you, who's going to buy a typewriter? Yeah. So things, things move on. And I think where we're going right now is really really fascinating i mean it's a virtual reality vr technology i mean if you want to spend some money on an oculus device and you know start exploring the virtual world and obviously you know about decentraland and you can have virtual conferences and everything it's it's not mainstream right now um yes some people who 
can afford a device and play some games can do that. But from the gaming industry, like things are going to move on to become like the norm. Like people are going to sit at home and do their shopping and not for shopping itself, but actual experience. Because right now you can go to Amazon, you can go to eBay and buy something and it will be delivered. Right. But there's not that shopping experience, you know, where if you can now switch on a device into a shopping mall and then invite your cousins and friends, you know, whoever you want to invite and go shopping with, like have a girl's night out or, you know, a lad's night out or whatever, go to a restaurant, have a meal. Yes, you won't be able to taste it through the for the virtual, but maybe you can. Maybe you can smell it. Maybe you can actually taste it. You know, I don't know. Things are going to change dramatically and the social element of it is going to be accepted in a virtual world. You know, it's not going to be like something like uh, weird, you know, that, hey, man, why don't you go and see a real human? I mean, look at this pandemic, what it was going to do to people where you have all this social distancing. People long for that social element. However, there is that kind of fear that, you know, uh, of each other and we have to... Uh, the way we work with each other, the way we socialize is going to change dramatically. Um, but humans are humans. So we will we, we'll still want to connect. And I think technology is going to play a part in uh, changing the way uh, we socialize. Facebook has already changed the way we socialize, you know, and we're going to see that change again. And there are going to be new platforms, virtual platforms that are going to change the way we socialize in the future as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great points, man. I couldn't agree with you more on that, on that one. Um, so Bilal, again, we're, you know, going to wrap it up here. Um, definitely want to thank you for, for hopping in and, and joining uh, today's yeah. podcast episode. Uh, it's been a pleasure, man. Always great listening to you, you know, talking about crypto. Uh, I think that's why, why we've connected so much. Uh, if you haven't seen, listen, uh, the first podcast you and I did, what was that? Was that about two years ago, a year and a half, two years ago? Uh, I don't know if it was that long, but it was a while ago. It was a while yeah. ago, yes. Yeah. I think about a year, come to about a year or so. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to have to go back and check that out. So, um, all right. Thanks again for uh, hopping in, Bilal. And welcome, thanks, man. everyone, for listening in. Thank and, you, everyone. Yep. Have a good one. And we will catch you on the next episode.